Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for using Azure IoT to feed my squirrels. Before I introduce our speaker, I have a few quick things to go over. Please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We ask that you be kind and respectful to everyone, including our speaker. We want the reactors to be a place everyone feels welcome. Please feel free to ask questions using the live YouTube or Twitch chat. In the chat, we'll also be sharing some links that go along with today's content, as well as to our reactor meetup pages if you're interested in checking out what other sessions we have coming up. Today's session will be added to our reactor YouTube page in 24 to 48 hours. And finally, I will share a link to our reactor survey. If you have a few minutes, we greatly appreciate your feedback. And I am now going to pass it over to Bruno. Thanks, Dion, and thanks, everyone. Bruno here uh, from Canada. You notice the flag, you notice the squirrel. And I am so, so happy to, to spend some time with you today talking about how I feed my squirrels using Azure IoT. I mean, it's a longer story, but it's super fun, and it's a real application. At the end, I hope I can show a real live demo of this working, not in my backyard, but in my desk, but I will show you videos of my squirrels. Um, you can find me on Twitter and at Bruno, and everything that you mentioned will be shared later, including the slides, the demos, and I will be super happy to answer all of your questions. So let's go for it. Um, let's start uh, with the beginning. So what are we going to do today, which is the optional knowledge that you are probably going to, you probably need to have, but you're going to understand even if you don't know anything. I am going to talk about Azure IoT, the platform, and how we are going to code for Azure IoT. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code and Platform EO extension for code to do the programming. And I am going to do all of the code based focus on Arduino with C++. And of course, there will be squirrels everywhere. There will be squirrels trying to see what we can do. And big disclaimer, when I start here, is sorry about the bad jokes, the crappy animations, and the demos. This is just a scenario that I, I think it's going to be nice to use Azure IoT. And hey, at the end, this works. And let me give you some context. I'm, I am not going to do much slides. I'm going to just set up here some context. It will be cold after this. A couple of months ago, we moved to a new house in Canada. And in the backyard, we started to have these little friends visiting us. So we have not two, we have several squirrels come here, and we have a table that we use when we are cooking outside in the summer, whatever. So they start to come here and start to basically look for food. This is Canada. They are not afraid of the winter. You can see a live camera uh, where how, how the squirrel in the snow uh, it's coming here trying to figure out if there's food or not food. They come here, they get there. So at the end, I get this super cute and small little table where you can put some nuts and other food and they come here, get their stuff and go back. And somewhere in this process, I started to realize, hey, I can do some AI on top of this. I can do some IoT with this. I can count how many squirrels come to my backyard. So I know if I have food, if I don't have food, hey, we can do something like this. So I decided, in my in my in my mind, okay, let's see how we can create a kind of a system to detect the squirrel, to detect when they come here. And I get, I started with a very simple idea. I started to think, okay, I will have a device on top of the table, and the device is going to have a camera or a sensor. And every time that we have a squirrel coming to the table, I will send this information to the cloud, and in the cloud I can start to count these squirrels. So super simple. Super easy. It doesn't require a lot of a lot of complicated hardware or whatever. So once I have this idea, I started to figure out, okay, what can I do? How we can start? How how can I make this real and happen? And as part of the materials that we have in Azure IoT, there is a full set of tutorials. I'm going to share this, uh, the links also later. But if you go to aka.ms/iot uh, beginners, you will find a full scenario using different type of devices that will help you to understand what is Azure IoT, how you can connect a device, how you can program a device, and a lot of other scenarios. So using this as the base, I realized that I can do this using different scenarios. I can use 
a Raspberry Pi, I can use a specific Arduino device, and I can also use this amazing device, which is called the wheel terminal. The wheel terminal, I am going to hold this one in my hand, hand here, sorry, is this very, very small device that has a lot of amazing features. So you can see here a small video. I was playing around with this device connected to the cloud, interacting with Azure functions to open and close a physical door. But what I really like about the device is that, hey, the device is Arduino-based device, and out of the box, you have uh, three buttons that you can use. You have a couple of ports in the bottom that you can connect sensors. You have the chance to connect with, uh, it has a wireless an antenna, so you can connect to your Wi-Fi network. It supports Bluetooth. It has a screen, which is super interesting. It's a very small screen. It's I think the resolution is 320, 240 or something like this. But hey, it's super, super cool to start here. So I was thinking, okay, let's start to use this and let's start to see how we can do something with this. So that's it for slides. Let me show you what can create here. So uh, let me open another one. As I said, I am going to I am going to use Visual Studio Code and I am going to use an extension which is called uh, platform.io. And even if most of the time when we do these when we do these these demos, we use the extension for <clears throat> We use the extension, we use the Arduino IDE, which is kind of the standard. Uh, I think it's nice also to use this one because we are going to work directly in Visual Studio Code. So it's go, we are going to have access to source, con source code control, integration with Git, a lot of runs, a lot of commands, template, the snippets, most other stuff. And it's a free extension that you can install. It's called uh, platform.io. It's still running. Once you have the 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 install the extension activated and updated is loading here. You can have the chance to work with a lot of different type of devices. So if you go here and create a new project, I will define the project name demo four. I can choose here my board, which is the Arduino device that I want to use. So let's filter for wheel or terminal. There it is. And then I will say, okay, I don't want to save this in the default location. Let me go to my event location. I will save it here. And a couple of seconds later, I have a project that I can use to write code for wheel terminal. And at this moment, I already created a couple of empty projects. And at this moment, uh, what we can do is, hey, we can do the hello world in, uh, in, the, Arduino, in the Arduino demos, which is basically, make a LED blink, make a LED do on, off, on, off. I am going to do something different uh, because this is kind of what you see. And because we have a, a device with buttons, I will connect the device and I will start to <coughs> basically interact with the buttons of the device. So once this process is created, let's start to code this. First of all, I, I connect the, oh, sorry, I, I think I already have one with the name, that's why I had the error, but I connect the, the device to, to a cable, and I will start to, to write my code. In the Arduino world, the way that we run application, we describe application is we have a setup function that is going to be run as soon as the device gets power on, and then we have a loop function that is going to be called again and again and again and again. So it's very simple, and what I do here, if I go here to my setup and I will do wheel one, Oh, I don't have here the, the snippets. Uh, I, I will do wheel one, and then I start to, to connect my snippets. So let me copy my snippet here so I can have it in my folder. I have here my snippet. Let's move to the to the complete one. So I have here the wheel one and I let me open the the other one so I can take a look. At the code. So as I said, the first line of code that I'm going to use is going to be uh, to define which are the setup instruction here. And my setup instructions are going to be basically let 
let's init my buttons. I will open the serial port and I will init the interaction with the buttons. So coming back here, let's go to the code and this is how I do. I open the, the, the serial port in 9,600 9, and then I will init my three buttons. And then what I am going to do is in the loop, in the loop uh, function, I am going to check for the button if they are pressed or not, and I'm going to show a message. Again, very simple. Let's go here and start to review the code. So let me copy the let me copy the the variables here, and I am going to check. Basically, I have a button press, true, false. And a message, and I'm going to say, hey, if I press the button A, the message will be button A, and I will check the button press. Same for the others, and then at the end, I am going to print this in the serial port. So very simple, two lines of, uh, I mean, 40 lines of code. I will use the serial for this, so I can go here to platform.io, and I will build my project. This will be connected, and in a couple of seconds later, uh, will be will be will be in. It's doing everything there. Amazing! I don't need to to change. First time is going to build all of the necessary <coughs> all of the necessary files that we have for Arduino. Then it's going it's going to build only the CPP file that we are working. So once it's built and we have access to this. I can deploy this, I can upload this to my to my device. There it is, super simple, super small, and I can do this upload and monitor, which is going to basically build this again faster than before, and then I also going to open the, is going to open the monitor, the serial monitor to connect to the device. Once I have this up and running, conf5, there it is. It's there, so if I come here, I'm going to show this very quickly, don't care about this, and press a button, I will start to get information in my, in the serial monitor there, oh, there it is, where I have here basically working with, hey, I am deploying this, pressing the buttons, and get the info in the box. So that's kind of the easy way to do this, that's kind of, hey, I already have this up and running, it's kind of nice, I can interact with the buttons, but let's do something different. Let's, as I mentioned, we have access to the to the small screen. We have access to the monitor. So let's try to use the small uh, TFT screen to do this. In order to do this, I am going to go to my full demos here, and I have one which is very similar to the one that we do we did before. But I will use this library. I will use the TFT library to do this. So when I am uh, interacting here, the first action that I'm going to do, I am going to include a couple of libraries to work with a small screen. And then at the beginning, I am going to init, initialize the screen. How I can do this? So I am going to tft.begin, then select the rotation. This is going to basically set if I want the screen in this position, this position, or this position. Then back screen is going to be in the black color. That size, I want to be a big one. And then I am going to basically start to set the cursor in a specific position, position of the screen. And then if I press a button, I am going to show the same message, but in the screen. So let's build this one. And let, oh, where is this? So let's build this one and then let's, Somehow I don't have the, the build for this. Like this is demo mode. This is what's happening in these scenarios. No problem. I will close this one and I will use the complete one. Okay, at this moment I should have access to my code. This is the same demo running here. And let's see if I can activate the extensions and start to build this. There it is. It's not loading the platform. 
Dat i al, hij al. It's checking the files. Sorry about that. This is live demo. This is what happened. And two seconds later, I should have the extension running, ready to go. There it is. And once it's loaded in, I will have the task and I will have the chance to build my project. So it's loading the task and I can upload and monitor. Again, it's going to take some time to build this, but the idea is that once I have this build and upload into my wheel terminal, I am going to be able to connect and to see how it, when I press the button, it's going to display a message on the screen. As you can see, because I am using the TFT library, it's going to have much more code. It's going to have much more uh, stuff to build. Again, it's only doing all of this the first time. And there it is when it's when it's on. When it's on, I will try to show you here. This one is very small, but when I press a button, there is a there is a line there. Show the button and nothing there. Press a button again, and you have the the text there. So it's kind of working. It's also sending to the serial. But the idea is that hey, we have a monitor here. We have we can check the code how it's working. Why not? Can we use also images? How can I get here and also use images? It's small. Remember, it's a small screen. So what we have is the chance to create using, uh, we could start to use an XB, XMB uh, format to, to show these icons where we basically pick up an icon and then transform an icon in two colors to an array of, of white and you have a, a zero or a one where you want to draw something. And there is a, the option here to use this XB map, that's the official name of this, Technology. So what I am going to do here, I have a cross and a check. Every time that I press a button, I will basically show this on the screen. And by the way, after this, I am not going to do the demos anymore showing the screen here. I have another setup to do better demo, uh, better demos. And hey, let's see if I, this one also works. It's super easy, super fast to, to configure it. Again, up and running, there it is. Once you build the first time, the, the next one are very, very, very small. And let's see if we can see this here. You see there, oh, I have my, the, the reflection is not good. I have here showing that I have an X and if I press, let me, let's do this. Let's change the, the colors for the demo to, when I initialize the screen, let's use white as the field screen color, and I will print the message using the color white. So once I have this, I'm going to show the icons only, and it's going to be with the white screen. Let's see, let's hope that the reflection is, is good enough. Building, compiling, and should be on in a couple of seconds. Okay, so my, the screen is a mess, but I think it's going to be easier to see there. You see here that I have a red cross there. If I press a button, it will switch to a white. Oh my God, the camera is hiding this. It will switch to a, to a green one. And lesson learned, do not do demos here with this. Next demos are going to be with this one, which is much more easy to use, where you can see there, and it's going to work. So let me stop this one, start this one, and deploy this to the, other, to the one that you see there. This is going to be a nicer one to, to see. It's already part of the camera. And once it's deployed, we can see the demo there. 
But the idea is that using 40 lines of code, I can access to the buttons, I can access to the screen, I can start to, to do kind of a live demo, and hey, it works. It's kind of nice. It's kind of easy to, to see and understand. So it's once it's copied. It's not showing there. I need to show and which one I leave. Oh, the other one. You can see there we have some screen, we are we are showing something, and it's only about time to do this. To keep the track of time, let's do the, the last changes here. Let me close and delete this one. So let's change this to black and do the last deployment to the device. Final demo in the one that you see there. Right now it's showing Microsoft Reactor, it's showing some, some text and some stuff. Once it's deployed, we should see that it's going to change the screen and we are going to have to the chance to see more info there. Okay, there it is. The program is not running anymore, it's copying the new one. You see the bottom right, bottom left corner, we have an X. If I go and press a button, it should change to a green. With the name of the button, then go back there, let's press another button. There it is, and hey, it's kind of work, it's nice. And again, let's review the code here, let me hide the device. It's just 60 lines of code, and we are accessing button, controlling the screen, and doing a lot, a lot of stuff. And I also learned that showing this live with the camera is not a good idea, so everybody's, everybody's nice here. But the next step here is I have access, I have access to the device, I can interact with the device screen, interact with the buttons, how can I connect and how can I start to use the, the sensors? How can I create code to use one of the sensors? So there is a sensor, let me open the, the demo here. There is a sensor which is called, there are different ways to do this. When I was thinking, I can use a camera. Uh, the camera probably is going to be my next project right now and do some AI and custom vision to detect the, to detect the, if we have a squirrel coming by or not. But there is also another uh, way to do this that is using an ultrasonic sensor. An ultrasonic sensor is a small sensor. This is, this is the sensor that we have that is going to basically send a, a beam and if it detects something, it's going to get back the beam and it's going to detect the, <coughs> it's going to detect the distance between the object detected. So it's just basically going to detect something in front of the sensor and the distance between these. It's work nice between uh, in a couple of scenarios, a small scenarios. So when you have something between five centimeters and maybe a meter, that's fine. And the nice things about this is that it, this is all part of what is called the groove set of sensors that we can easily plug and play. So you see here the white connection. We don't need to go one pin and do the wiring and the soldering. This is just connecting cables, connecting wires between the sensor and the wheel or the terminal, and we have it here. Also, which is very nice, is that most of these sensors from C Studio have sample code available to use them for in C++ or Arduino, usually Python for Raspberry Pi. We have the ArduPi, which is a Python specific version for Arduino. So we can get here and start to to play around with this, connect something like this. We have the cable connected to the Arduino, and we use the same cable to connect here with the wheel terminal, and we can use this, and we can detect how far are, is something from the, from the sensor. And the way that we can use this is we need to add a library to our project. Here in the configuration file for the project, we can define which libraries we want platform AO, AO uh, will add into our project when it's building. So I know the name, I know it's the Studio Global with Sonic Ranger. There's a huge marketplace for libraries, not only for sensor, but to do to work with JSON, to work with a wireless connection, to work with HTTP request. It's a full set of libraries that you can use. And I am going to add the library to work with the sensor. And once I have the library, I am going to write a couple of lines to do this. So the base code is super easy. It's again, I will initialize the screen. 
rotation in three, and then back uh, the back color is going to be black, excites, and then in the loop, and this is the important part, I am going to, every time that this is run in the loop function, I am going to get the measure of the ultrasonic sensor. So I am going to get the range. It's five centimeters, six centimeters, 50, or whatever. I am going to print this information on the screen, and depending on if I am close or up, five centimeters or less or more, I am going to show an icon or the other. So it's a very simple project, but it's basically what I have in my mind to detect if there is something in front of the feeder. And if I run and deploy this, you will see, let's see if the camera makes sense, you will see how easy and how we can work with this, how we can easily get uh, the sense of I am getting close or or far away from the sensor. So it's going to build, it's going to add the dependencies, it's going to add the libraries, and then I can start to use it. So once it's there, let me start the demo. Let's go here, let's minimize this one, and let's get back the camera. So that's the camera, it's running there. I have, one is blinking, it's deploying the new application. I have the ultrasonic sensor connected in the bottom. You see the two cables, I have a sensor there. So it's blinking, it's connecting. There it is, the distance is 13. And you see that we have, a, it's not showing green, but believe me, that's a green check in the bottom. If I go here, and do something like this, you see how if I get close, I get there, the ultrasonic sensor values, and depending on the values, I can show something, I can do start to do actions, and it's very, very nice. And it's also very easy to use. It's a very small sensor. You can deploy it, you can connect it, and you can put it everywhere. And that's the base code that I need to detect if there is something in front of me. So with this, I can also use a servo motor. I can use, I was thinking that, okay, I'm going to check if the, if the squirrels are there, but I also start to think, okay, not only check if the squirrels are there, I am also going to, uh, I am also going to move, I, I will create my own feeder, and when I have the squirrel nearby, I am going to open and close the <coughs> a servo motor. So in the other connection, in the other connector, I, connect a servo motor. Servo motor is a motor that you can use uh, and you can have the step-by-step -step location of the motor. And depending of the button that I am press, I am going to move the button, the, the motor, the servo motor to this location or to the other location. So I am going to make it the, the servo motor to spin. In this specific demo, I created, I uh, adapted the demo servo motor files to work with the, the wheel terminal because you need to change a couple of variables. So you see here that I have a specific header file with all of the information for the servo motor. I oh, still open this one. I have a timer with basically going to control how fast the motor is moving, and I have the logic of the servo motor. You don't need to care about this. If you are planning to do something with this, just include these files, include the servo motor header, and then you can start to use it. So once I have this up and running, let's deploy this, go platform.io, upload and monitor, let's deploy the, the project, and a couple of seconds later, in the other port, I am going to have the, the servo motor, it is here. Super small but it's going to start to spin depending on the button that I press. So this is my time, this is going to take some, some seconds, my time to drink some water and also to check uh, how we are here. It's kind of nice, it's building, building, building and I am going to move to the connection later after this. I'm still on time. Sorry, I just moved this and I didn't realize if I move the project, I need to build everything again. But there it is, it's working, it's there. Couple of seconds later, I have the servo position in zero in the bottom. If I came here and press a button, it's going to move, I press a button back, it's going to move. 
So you get the idea, and you can see here in the bottom that in the serial monitor, how I am moving this. So with all of this, I have everything that I, that I need to do this. Let me share my screen, hide the camera, and what I build with this. I learned how to interact with the TFT, how to interact with the sensors, how to do a lot of stuff. So I built my first prototype. And this is the prototype. First, I created, I'm sorry, I'm not a good designer, but you see here is I have this winning spill that is showing that the, the application is working. And from time to time, if I detect a squirrel, I'm going to change from a tree to a squirrel. And then if I do this and I, I start to trigger these actions using the ultra rain sensor, you see here in the right, if I get my hand closet, it's going to say detected. So there it is. With the, the lines of code we just see, we can start to create this. Then what, what's next? Okay, the next step will be, I am going to use a real, I don't have real squirrel here, I, don't, I try to be nice, but if I get close with the stuffy one that they have, hey, the squirrel is there, it's detected, so I have my demo kind of working. I have the first part of the demo working. How about the feeder? So I went there, I get this, uh, I think it's a bird or a squirrel feeder. I create this, this small layout, and the idea is that at the bottom there is a small lid, a small uh, lid that is going to be open and close when I press the button here to basically deliver some nuts. And close it and open and close. Hey, I have the pieces, I have the code, I have the basic idea. The next step will be, okay, how can I connect this? What are the steps that I need to do this? So again, my idea was to use Azure IoT. And timing was great because I think it was a couple of days ago, uh, based on the two main platforms that we have in the Azure space to use IoT, which are IOT IoT Suite and IoT Central, we have a lot of new sets of libraries to work with Arduino. Before going there, we have these two platforms to work. Basically, IoT Suite is the platform as a service, IoT Central is the service, uh, the software as a service, I'm sorry. And I really like both of them because if I want to prototype and I want to do something very fast, Azure IoT Central, it's great. Out of the box, I can connect the device, I can start to send an example telemetry and receive commands, and I have out of the box, uh, out of the box uh, charts, dashboards, uh, features to export data to, I don't know, to, to a blog in, in Azure. So it's kind of great. Azure IoT Suite is kind of the big brother there where we can define specific set of uh, security mechanisms and to control the devices. We can do much more stuff. So for this one, I decided I, go, I will go to Azure IoT Suite because I won't have dashboard on the fly, but I will have the data there. I can start to grow here with this. So as I mentioned two days ago, uh, if you go to aki.ms slash Arduino, there is a, a new library to use if you have an Arduino device that will help you to connect to the to an Azure IoT uh, scenario hub basically in five minutes. It's super simple. It's amazing. Uh, you only need to add a library, and then when you add the library, you add your user password, and you can connect. Of course, you need to have an Arduino device that have wireless connectivity. Let me show you here the, this is the, where is this? This is the, the official library, the official uh, post with the, with the announcement is from the 14th, so two days ago, and it's the Azure IoT SDK for library. You just need to add this to this library to, <coughs> to your project. This is, the, here they are using the Arduino IDE, but you can use this also in Visual Studio Code with platform IO. And once you have this, get your Wi-Fi data, name of the network, password, and then you need to put, you need to complete the host name and the ID and the key, and that's it. You can connect your device to, to the cloud. It's super easy, super, it's a great way to start. If you, if you want to go farther, I will strongly advise you to go for this IoT for Beginners, which is a full, full, tutorial that will give you the a high level view of what is IoT, how what we can build with IoT, how devices work, how the clouds work, how communication works. It's great. It's also have it's also gives you the chance to use a wheel terminal, which is a not very expensive device and you can access, you can get this device from the Seed Studio, from Amazon. There are plenty of resellers. 
You can use a Raspberry Pi, which is also a super popular device, and you have it there, and you have different set of scenarios, how to connect to the device, how to get information from the device, and much, much more. I really, really suggest that you do here, start the curriculum, start the, the steps, and you are going to have fun, and you're going to learn a lot. I mean, I came here and I learned a lot, even if I know I, that I need this stuff. Going back to my, to my scenario, uh, now that we have the library, the idea to connect, the scenario for me to connect this device to the cloud was much, much more easier. Because uh, remember, we are working he here with devices which are very, very, uh, we don't have code for everything. We basically need to do uh, everything here. So in this demo, the one that I'm going to show you right now, I am using the, the set of libraries to connect to the Wi-Fi. But then, let me maximize this, but then I am also, I write also some lines of code to handle if we get disconnected to the Wi-Fi, what is going to do. I display this information on the screen, so I have a visual cue if the device is connected or not. There is plenty much more to happen here. So how this works, quick review of the code. You don't need to, you don't need to listen to this. You can read the code later, but I am going to get a starting point, a starting time, and then I am going to start to disconnect the device and in an eternal loop until my Wi-Fi gets the connected, oh, sorry, the connected status, I am going to start to roll and I'm going to start to write into the device, connecting, seconds waiting, connecting, seconds waiting. When, once I am connected, uh, I am going to clean the screen, show the IP, and basically start to do some work in the, in the loop, which is basically going to show I am connected, I am not connected, and this is how it works. Let me build and deploy this, and I will show you also how this works. The connection information here is uh, it's defined in a file called config.h in a header where I have my network and my password. I know this is sensitive information, so I am not supposed to share this, but no problem. This is not a real wireless network that I have here. What I am using is a, I am sharing my network in Windows, and I am using that network to, to connect here. So let's go back to the upload and monitor. Let's show the camera again from the device. Perfect this. That's the device. And once the project is built and deployed, it's going to show that trying to connect, trying to connect, trying to connect. And the network that is going to be used to connect is going to be one that I have here. In Windows, I create a mobile hotspot. So I have my machine sharing my internet connection. And here I have the name of the, of the connection, which is IoT Labs, and then the password. So a couple of seconds later, so once the project is built and deployed, I can enable this to make it work. So let, let's leave it here and wait until it's deployed to the, to the device. I see some comments here in the chat. I am not reading the comments right now. I will try to read them as soon as I finish to answer some questions. Uh, I will leave it last 10 minutes to, to answer the questions. In the meantime, let's wait until this is deployed. This is a big one. It's going to build a lot, a lot of dependencies. And I can take some time here to to read the comments. Send Samuel, send Sandrit, send Microsoft. We are almost there, and it's connected. The four three is deployed. It should be changing the screen near time soon. And there it is. So it's there. It's trying to connect. Sorry about the, the reflection, but it's not connecting. And once I enable my hotspot here in my machine, it will, after a couple of seconds, it will be connected to the to my network, and there it is, it's connected, and also 
you can see here it's connected and it's working. So I can go here and see this is the IP address that machine give it and the device is connected to the cloud. I can start to work. If I add, and basically this is as close to the event, if I add the same lines of code and I enable the connection for, uh, for the Azure, uh, for the Azure IoT, I can also register the device and connect to Azure IoT. In order to do this, let me go to the final, to the final demo, which is deploy this one and be and connect this one to the to the cloud. What I am going to do here, I am going to do to my personal Azure IoT hub that I have. Let me hide the, the device. This is the personal IoT hub that I have. I will create a new device. I will just give the name here. Let's go for Wheel Reactor Feeder. Save. And a couple of seconds later, I should have the Wheel Reactor Feeder created here. And I am going to copy the connection stream for the device. So once I have the connection stream, I copy the connection stream and I can go back to my code and add this connection stream to my config file. Oh, there it is. It's connected. It's kind of working. Yes, let's save. And let's build and deploy this. This will give me the chance to deploy this as a real uh, server scenario to the stream. But I am not going to use the one that you see here in the camera. I am going to deploy these two other ones. So while I am changing the camera, let me build this platform.io. Let's go this and this. We should get the task anytime soon. And let's build this one. So while it's building, let me change my demos. So what you will see here in any second is the full deploy of the the full deploy of the system in the it's kind of let's zoom out a little. There it is, that's the feeder. It has the sensor, it has everything connected there. And the idea is that once I have this uh, build, I can deploy this to the device and it will connect to the cloud, register the device as an Azure IoT device, and start to, to detect uh, squirrels. And when the squirrel is detected, it's going to also send a message to the Azure IoT. So while we are waiting, let's change the cables here one more time. And we'll enable this one. And let's wait until finish building. In the meantime, to show this, I am going to open the IoT Explorer that will allow me to connect to my Azure IoT Hub. And here I will see my devices and I will start to see if my devices are. You can see here that I have four devices. I have the reactor feeder working here. And at any moment, I can start to check the telemetry from the device. So once this one is built and deployed, I will start to check the check the telemetry. It's building Azure IoT files. In the meantime, questions. Uh, image detection, simple, or cheap. No, I don't see any questions, so that's that's fine. Oh my God, that one was deployed with the previous version. Sure. 
should be ending anytime soon. And in order to get some time, in order to save some time, what I am going to do is, there it is, it took a decent amount of time, 180 seconds, and let's upload and monitor this. Again, this is going to be faster, it's just uploading. And let's take a look at when the device is restarted. Okay, build complete, release mode, and ensure a lot. You see here that it was it's working right now with the previous demo. I make a I, I make a mistake and I enable a different cable, so it was uploading the, the first demo with the buttons to the feeder. There it is, it's uploaded, it's working. And I should see here if I disable the my network cable, it should start to connect there to the try it's trying to connect to the to the wire Wi-Fi network. If I enable the network, it should be connected anytime soon and start the process to. There it is, it's connected. So here, it's not detecting anything. If I pick up my little friend, the stuff at the squirrel, and I start to. Play around, we will see that it's open. And if I enable the telemetry in Azure IoT and I start to check and receive events, the next time it detects a squirrel, it will start to send message to, to the cloud. So you see here that it's receiving open and close. And at any moment, I will start to get the we reactor feeder message here. Let me check. This is the good one. Yes. There it is, here are the message. So we see here that first it sent the true, the feeder was open, it was detected at five centimeters, now it's sending false, that is two. The cool thing about this, I am just finishing to give the last 10 minutes, is that I can even send methods. Remember, this is the cloud. What you see in the right is the actual IoT Explorer representing the crowd. And if I send, I think it's squirrel detector invoke method, it will there it is, it's open, it's fake. It's basically said that, hey, you detected the squirrel and you get the info there, and I can go back and start to interact with the telemetry. So it's kind of nice looking at the squirrel, going to the feeder, detector is there. Hey, I have my numbers, I have the information in the cloud, I can start to, to see how this works. So getting close to the end, I have here, let me hide the device. I have here the full video of the demo just in case working. So let's recap what we just did. Uh, interact with the basic, the basic wheel terminal and features that we have in the device. Kind of nice, kind of easy. Sorry about the first one. I was hoping that the reflection is going, not going to be bad, but this is the way that I need to do demos. Then display custom text and message on the screen, interact with the sensors. And then once we are connected to the Wi-Fi network, we can start to register the device as an Azure IoT. So we use the library, we complete the, we complete just the connection stream for the device, and we can start to send telemetry to Azure IoT. When we have this message on the cloud, we can start to do analytics, reporting, plenty of other stuff. We are going to do a B2 of this event, talking about that, and we can also receive information from the Azure IoT. I may decide, okay, do not open the lead anymore. That's it, I am not going to feed my squirrel anymore. It's enough for today. So we can also send messages from the cloud to the device. If you want to start, the library released two days ago was here. It's in Azure Library for Azure IoT. You have the links here. Again, I strongly advise you that you can go to akia.ms slash IoT beginners. You will have the step-by-step -step to build something like this, very, very similar. 
And then you can also go for Wheel Terminal and try to get one of these devices. It's a super, it's a great way to start using one device like this. And also you can have the, the chance to get some other sensors. And hey, if you already have an Arduino device with have wireless capability, it will be great so you can use it for in, to do this. So 10 minutes to finish, that's that's it for me. Let's check the, let's say the, the chat if we have, if someone has any question. If not, happy holidays, enjoy the, the rest of the, the year. And I see you next one, where I'm going to pick this scenario and evolve it a little to make it more amazing. Let me check the chat. Okay, uh, hello, Samuel, Rana, and I don't see any question here, Oh, there are some new comments. Uh, Arturo asking, yes, how will you store and manage data if we have thousands of devices sending this kind of event? So there are a couple of ways, and this is more related to Azure IoT, but one of we can enable a, an event, an event hub, that will capture these, every time that one of the devices is sending data, will capture the, the data, and we can process the data there doing some kind of query. So an example is either true or false, and we can save this information to a SQL database, to a Cosmos DB database. database. Once, the de once the data is on the cloud, we can do plenty of other things. So I will probably go for an even have a scenario plus some kind of a storage. Or if you want to have this in just raw files, you can save this to a blob storage. Every message, a JSON file, but the cloud will scale and will support this, not one small device, plenty of device handling data. I hope this helps the, uh, as a question. Sergio said that, thanks Bruno, oh, thanks. Thanks to you, Sergio. This was my excuse to learn a little more about Azure IoT and again, we have a new library that makes it make very, very easy for us to connect uh, small devices like Arduino devices to Azure IoT. Before this, Raspberry Pi devices more powerful were fine. The Arduino were kind of tricky. Right now, in five minutes, you can have this, connect, have this connected to Azure IoT and grow from there. Thank you so much, Bruno. That was awesome. And thank you, everyone. Um, I did put a link to our reactor survey. If you have a few minutes and could fill that out, we greatly appreciate your feedback. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. And thank you again, Bruno. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Bye. rest of the week. Bye-bye.